don't raise your taxes, you just might not have a job at all. So, you know, but who wants to listen to those economists? My first guest is Brandon Arnold. He's the executive vice president of the Taxpayers Union. How are you doing, sir? Thanks for joining us. Doing great. Thanks for having me back. Okay, so before we get into this issue of Matt Taibbi being visited by one of the 87,000 IRS agents over alleged uh, taxes, uh, uh, his tax uh, return from 2021, which he says they actually owe him money. There was a hearing on Capitol Hill, and you, you just heard that economist saying, well, you might not have your taxes raised, you just might lose your job. Yeah, that was Scott Hodge from the Tax Foundation, and he hit the nail on the head. Even if you're not raising taxes directly on people making less than $400,000 a year, you simply cannot find an economist, even progressive far-left economists, who believe that if you hike taxes to the tune of a trillion dollars or more, that it's not going to impact in an adverse way working class Americans. They, all, they went, might debate all, all about the exact impact that it would have, but it would absolutely impact them, in this case, costing hundreds and thousands of jobs for working class Americans. That's why it's such a horrible, horrible idea. And they can't just hide behind this tax the rich, tax big corporations nonsense, because it's not true. Well, that's just the first pebble in the calm water, right? So 300,000 people lose their jobs. They don't have purchasing power. The things they would have bought is now affecting the businesses they would have bought them from, which will affect the people that work at those business. And then that ripple effect will go out. Yeah. And then, the, of course, that all ends up finding uh, its way to the taxpayer. How do we pay for those people when they go on to unemployment? How do we pay for them when they start to, to rely on Medicaid, food stamps, other government programs? Of course, that's going to increase the burden on the federal government. That happens during recessions and, of course, during depressions. And that's exactly what would happen as we have this ripple effect of bad government policies forcing more of a burden on taxpayers' backs, and we have to eventually raise taxes, which is even worse for the economy. So let's skip to the end here, and let's not raise taxes. Fortunately, I don't think the House Republicans have much of an appetite for Biden's budget. But let's just put aside the nonsense and get to real policy making here and try to make this country stronger. All right. Matt Taibbi, I, I think this weaponization of government subcommittee couldn't have come at a better time. So you have Matt Taibbi testifying before Congress about the Twitter files, and then all of a sudden he gets a knock at the door from federal agents. Okay, is it standard that if there's a discrepancy in your tax return that the IRS comes and visits you? No, it's not. And, and the IRS can make house calls, unfortunately, and it does make house calls, but they're very rare. They don't happen very often at all. And when they do, it's almost always preceded by first a letter or a phone call. So you usually know that they're coming. For them to make this unannounced visit, and also looking at 2018 taxes, they were looking at taxes that were nearly five years old. That's extremely unusual. You know, everybody knows when you do your taxes, you're supposed to keep your returns, keep all the associated paperwork for three years. That's usually the window that the IRS looks back at. So this is suspicious on a number of different levels. Fortunately, Chairman Jordan is all over this. He's already sent off a letter to Yellen and to the new IRS commissioner, Werfel. So hopefully we'll get to the bottom of this, but it just smells awful. It looks really, really shady. Yeah, but um, so, the, the, the IRS audit is kind of the ham sandwich of prosecutions, right? I mean, you can get audited for any number of reasons. And if the government really wants to intimidate you or scare you or make your life miserable, they knock at the door and they threaten you with an audit. Yeah, it goes back to kind of mafioso tactics here, doesn't it? And they knock on your door and say, you know, I wouldn't want anything to be broken here. Hope everything is OK. It's just a pure intimidation play. So it's very, very concerning. And, and, and you know, what drives me crazy here is we've been saying all along, ever since this first uh, $80 billion idea of uh, pumping up the IRS, supersizing it, came along, we said this would result in more IRS agents. And guess what? Those agents are going to take aggressive action. Sometimes they're going to be sitting behind a desk, but sometimes they're going to be coming to our door. Sometimes they're going to be knocking on the door and asking us questions that they shouldn't be asking. And of course, the left said we were bonkers. The left said we were nuts for even suggesting that we've got our tinfoil hats on. But look at this. Here is an individual, a journalist, no less, who's just been asking tough questions of the government who has a knock on the door from the IRS. Now, we don't know all the answers, so we don't want to get out ahead of, ahead of ourselves, but it sure as heck looks like what we warned about is coming to fruition. Yeah, and this is not a guy who's, a, you know, he's, he's not like a lifelong 
conservative, you know, thorn in the side of the Democrat Party. I mean, most of his work has been hailed by the left. So he makes he makes one little question, asks one little question about the relationship between the FBI and, and social media companies based on the fact that the owner of the company, Elon Musk, gave him access to the company's servers where he can look at the internal communications, see the emails, in other words, to bring the receipts, and then he gets a knock at the door that he's never had previously. Yeah, uh, the new commissioner has some explaining to do at the IRS, Daniel Warfel. <laughs> he's only been on the job for for a couple of weeks now, but uh, you know, it's 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 hard it's hard not to connect the dots here. It's hard not to think that something incredibly sketchy and really really concerning is taking place here. Uh, again, you know, this requires a full investigation. Chairman Jordan at the Weaponization Committee is all over this, so I think. He's got a scent. He's, he's like a, a dog on a bone here. I think he's going to get to the bottom of this, but it's going to require a lot of dragging in uh, of these commissioners. Uh, I'm sorry, the commissioner and a lot of IRS agents before the committee, before Congress to answer these tough questions. And th then we, we just need to clean house. We need to start firing people at the IRS that are taking these types of actions if this indeed is as egregious as it appears to be. This is worse than Lois Lerner, I would say. Yeah, just got that. that's where I was going to go. And you thought Lois Lerner retiring was the end of corruption at the the IRS. You know, this seems to be, and I'm going to run out of time here, the, the audit or the threat of the audit or a visit of a, from, from the IRS demanding perhaps your, your paperwork is kind of one of those things like, it's not really a crime. They just want to see your papers. It's not like typical where, you know, the government has to allege a crime before they send law enforcement to your home. This is one of this is like the ultimate way you can intimidate people is to knock on the door and say, we want to see some paperwork. And if you don't have it, you might be in trouble. I, I got to leave it there, sir. Thank you so much for joining us.